Hi, I'm Steph the Video Guy, and I'm doing a quick overview review of the uh, Canon T3i. This is the uh, kind of lower end of the digital SLR world. This uh, unit was uh, released a few years ago. Uh, there's a couple of uh, interesting features about it. Uh, it might look a little bit weird to you, uh, but that's beca only because I've got my little add-on. I uh, can uh, probably uh, include a, a link to that down in the doobly-doo, but uh, yeah, so basically this little connector down here, I'll show you how it works. It's got two normal T3i batteries that attach in it, and it, it gives me twice the amount of time that I can use it for. Uh, yeah, I really like it. It's uh, it's really great, and, and it's also interesting that it'll allow for uh, using um, AC adapters too. Of course, the T3i has a, a, a an option uh, that you can buy a aftermarket uh, adapter for it as well. Now, this unit uh, uses SD, unlike the uh, the the uh, 7D, which uses Compact Flash. Now you want to make sure this particular one I don't use a lot of. It's an Ultra 2, so it's it's quick enough, but uh, it's pretty small, 2 gig. So I don't I used uh, 32 gigs in this, but my last one died for some reason. So uh, so here's that little attachment. Uh, I'm not going to talk any more about that. Maybe I'll do a review on that little guy because I really like it. I like it. It's it's got a little rubber in the front. Uh, attachment. I put my uh, my attachment for my tripod down below. It uh, no, it it works really well. I wanted to be able to use this for events, this unit, and uh, it works. It works. I can do fashion shows or uh, dance recitals, if I wanted to. Uh, so long as I record in 12-minute chunks, that's the way these guys work. Um, all right. So I'm gonna turn this guy on, and and just give you a brief overview of uh, what I think uh, of it. I'll take the cap off here. Now this lens is the uh, the kit lens. It's the EFS 18 to 55. This is the lens that comes with it. And it, as you can see, it's got stabilizer. So uh, the stabilizer on this unit is actually not too bad. Of course, uh, you're not going to get crystal clear shots with this, not just because I'm, it's dusty, but uh, just because you're, um, you know, it's just not the most expensive optics. It's a little loose, as you can see, and um, you can't uh, you can't keep your focus when you're zooming. So that's just something to to think about. Uh, autofocus is really quite good. Um, let's see if I can focus on something. Oh, my hat over here. See, it focuses relatively quick. Unless there's not much to focus on. All right, so the ISO is set a little low for this dark area. Well, let's see. Yeah, it can't see those lines in the background very well. If it can't see, uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, this focus is set for center weighted, and so. Uh, if there's nothing in the center uh, it, but just one flat color, uh, it's not going to focus properly. So it focuses on my hat really nicely, though. Um, all right, so I'll just keep it like this for now. Um, it doesn't come with one of those little, uh, little button and uh, chain systems for the cap. So uh, I don't mind that because I don't like it flipping around when I'm uh, like outside shooting uh, footage of animals, or uh, if I'm, uh, yeah, I'm tr trying to capture audio. I don't want it to to walk out on me. Um, this has a nice flip out screen, uh, and this is the reason why I waited so long to get it. I had a, uh, I actually had a uh, Canon 7D, uh, but it didn't have the flip out screen, and I thought, oh, here's a perfect chance for me to get a, a really nice flip out screen and um, be able to use it, uh, you know, kind of worm's eye shots and, and, and um, high shots, bird's eye view. But 
it's interesting that I don't really find myself uh, pulling it out. So, yeah, basically it just goes against here, same as the 7D, and that's the way it works. Now, the thing about this uh, camera is that it's got all of your manual options. It's set to movie mode right now. Let's move it over to... Uh, see, it's got auto depth of field. And it's manual, and it tells you what these modes are on screen, so it's quite handy. Uh, I use everything manual. Um, that's just the way I do it. And the nice thing is this has live view, so it'll show you what it's looking at. Now, let's, let's look at the menu. Let's go, just quickly brush through the menu here. Um, it's got uh, pretty much everything that you would expect from a decent uh, digital SLR. Like I said, it's a low run of the uh, digital SLRs, but um, you know this unit right now, you can buy this unit with the kit lens for $500. And for a digital SLR of its capability, yeah, that's pretty darn good. Okay, uh, as we're going through here, um, because we're on movie mode, or because we're on photo mode, uh, it's not gonna show you uh, the movie settings. So, because I'm, uh, I wanna focus a little bit on video because I think that's where its strength lies. I'm gonna pop over. It doesn't spin 360, you gotta go back the other way. All right, here's movie mode. And here's the menu for movie mode. Exposure manual, quick mode, uh, all normal stuff, highlight tone priority. Remote control, you can, um, on, in the side here is a, a little mini that allows for a remote control, as well as a mic, so you can set your microphone up. The cool thing about the mic, and I'll just show you this, it's right here. On this screen it says uh, sound recording manual, which is different from the 7D. That's a, another important thing that was super important for me is that you could set this to manual for your, uh, your audio. As you can see, my voice is activating and uh, well within the 12 uh, decibel range. Say I speak a little louder, I'd have to turn this up quite a bit, actually. Yeah, let's, let's turn that up. Oh, there we go. Let's turn that up because you'd have to be at a concert. And this, that's probably why it was set low. You'd have to be at a concert. See, it goes red. So. Yeah, you have to be at a concert. Okay, there we go. So uh, unlike some of the later units, this doesn't have a touch screen. I didn't want a touch screen because I don't really like people touching my screen, <laughs> including me. And so I want to be able to see my video as clear as possible. So I'm going to go back. Let's go. Uh, the cool thing about this and the reason I keep it at uh, 128060 it's because I like doing slow-mo. I like having a nice slow-mo for, um, for whatever I'm shooting. So I've got 1280, 720 at 60. So this gives me a, a nice crisp looking shot, but also gives me the opportunity if I'm editing to 24p to get a really, really nice slowdown. Also, if I'm going to uh, 30p, which is commonly what I do, uh, I can get a nice slowdown. This is a really great B-roll camera if you're wanting to shoot B-roll because uh, then you can set your shots up. You're not having to worry about running, uh, you know, running and gunning and, and that sort of thing. It also does uh, 19, 1080p, uh, 24, and 30. That's 29.97. Just so you know, when it says 30, it means 29.97. It also does a 640.30, but uh, of course that's it's a standard that most people aren't using nowadays. So um, this is what I like to keep it on. You can uh, turn off your digital zoom too, which is always what I do. Um, uh, metering timer. So basically uh, you turn it on, you hit the, hit the switch, and it'll only meter for a little bit of time. And it's all about you know, how much battery it uses. Grid display, it's got a, a three-quarter or a, a two-third grid display, so that way if you're shooting docks, you can uh, align your foreheads and, and all that stuff. Video snapshot, uh, we, I don't use that, so. 
exposure compensation, custom white balance. One thing I should say about this is that uh, this allows for um, white balance, custom white balance. Um, so um, if you're, say if you're, uh, yeah, right, you, you have to shoot the, the photo before you go in. So uh, if I wanted to, I could go like this and say that's my gray sheet or my white sheet. I take the shot. It doesn't want to take this shot because I'm too close. I'll turn that off. So I take that shot. Then I go into menu, custom white balance, and then it'll white balance to that shot. Okay, okay. And picture style. Now you can adjust your picture style so that way if you want to add film effects later on, you can do that. I like to have a little bit of, uh, you know, vibrancy in my stuff, so I tend to keep it on landscape. It gives me a good contrast. Uh, some people do monochrome or, or something flat and then add stuff in later, but that's what I do. All right, so, yeah, beeps. You can turn off the beeps so that way when you're shooting, you don't uh, upset too many people. Image review, of course, all the same stuff that you can get. Yeah, there we go. And uh, I have to say that uh, for this camera, I really like the way that it uh, operates because it'll give you live view the whole time you're shooting. Now, as someone who has myopia, uh, I've got uh, glasses. Um, this is really, really handy. I don't have to put my face to this. Now, it does have an adjustment for, uh, for uh, eye, but I've never used cameras that way because of my eyes, and I can't really get used to it. But for folks who like that, that uh, ability to look through their camera, it's there. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't do it. Uh, we're on movie mode, so we can, that's how you hit record for movie mode is you hit that button. It's not shutter. If you hit shutter, one, it's gonna focus, and two, it's gonna take a photo, which uh, is in the 69 frame. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a little different to operate, but you get used to it. And it's a little different than the 7D too. So uh, red shows that it's recording. So it's recording 60p. So even though I get fast movements, I've got it set to slow. So might see here, here my info is ISO 800, which isn't that great. Um, and it's set for 63.5. So 60, because uh, it won't go below 60, because in video mode, uh, it needs at least 60 shutter movements per, uh, per second. So uh, otherwise it won't align to the frames per second. So if I set it to 30, I can get a little bit more performance out of it, but uh, it, it's okay. Uh, and then of course your, uh, your f-stop, which uh, is whatever your, your, whatever your lens is capable of. So yeah, so there's the review. I'm, I'm just gonna say, I, you know, I'm really impressed with what this camera will do. You know, you're, you're gonna save at least a thousand bucks off of uh, the next real uh, step up which is, you know, like the 70 or I guess the 60D now. The 60D, from what I've seen, is basically the 7D with the, uh, this added to it, um, which is, uh, you know, I, I liked, but I wasn't willing to pay for, you know. Uh, it's got the hot shoe up top, which I, uh, I find quite handy when I'm using uh, a, a constant light source. I've got a couple of uh, video camera lights that I can put in as soft shoes, um, not, as, not as hard, so that way it won't take the power, but it's a nice holder. Now I can put this on a tripod, have my light above, and it's perfect. But um, yeah, there's, there's the quick and dirty review of this guy. I, I definitely have to give it, you know, it's a nine out of 10 for the, the price point. Definitely, I, I like it a lot better than uh, any other cams, SLR cams that I've used. Um, you know, it's, it's got the out video output and HD output on the, the mini HDMI. And you know, it's, it's got all of the options you would want from a small camera. Um, you know, it's, it's just, uh, 
It's a nice overall, it's a great, and I would say it is a great starter camera for someone who has never operated a, di a digital SLR before. You know, you're not going to go to a, um, like a Canon Mark II or a Mark III uh, without operating one of these small guys first, I wouldn't think, because uh, the Mark III has a lot more to it, and uh, you don't really want to be jumping off that, off that ledge without knowing. The, um, the other really cool thing about this that I like is that you can um, put a hack onto your card uh, that's called Magic Lantern, and it gives you a, a huge feature set. Th that's pretty much what I, what I use it for. I'm going to have to reload onto my new card, but um, it ha gives you a huge fe feature set that this, you know, this uh, Canon software doesn't give you. Stuff like uh, Zebra for, for high, you know, high uh, brights, a Zebra for low darks. Um, it'll give you an uh, intervalometer, so if you're shooting time-lapse, I've done some time-lapse with it, and it's brilliant. You set it from you know, half a second up to, uh, you know, up to, you know, once every minute or once every two minutes, uh, which is something that uh, this unit uh, without the, the hack won't do. But uh, maybe I'll do a review of, of that software sometime in the future. But uh, there you go. Uh, yeah, like I said, I give this a 9 out of 10 for what it is, you know. Um, if you're looking for a, a, a big pro professional camera that's going to give you professional um, professional shots uh, for your uh, say for your your photography studio you want a full frame camera but this APS-C this uh, APS-C cam is quite nice for video and uh, we'll get you started well uh, if you have any questions, uh, write them down in the doobly-doo. If you have any, uh, anything you'd like me to review or any questions you have with this one, let me know. Thank you.